My task today is to talk about the national democratic struggle and the people's trial of U.S. imperialism and its puppets in the Philippines. I shall describe the political, socioeconomic, and cultural aspects of the national democratic struggle. Thus, I provide a broad context for the conflict of cultural imperialism and people's culture. In keeping with the theme of people's trial, I wish to present the cold-blooded and systematic crimes of U.S. imperialism and its puppets in oppressing and exploiting the Filipino people, the programmatic demands of the people for national and social liberation, and the process of rendering justice. The Philippine Revolution started in 1896 and triumphed over Spain in 1898. But after pretending to be friendly and helpful to the revolution, the U.S. ignited the Filipino-American War in 1899 and carried out a war of aggression in order to destroy the Philippine Republic and impose its own colonial rule over the Philippines. The U.S. carried out a barbaric war in order to defeat the Philippine Republic. It killed a total of 1.5 million Filipinos out of a population of 7 million in the course of the officially designated Filipino-American War of 1899 to 1902 and further pacification campaigns up to 1914. The U.S. forced the Filipino people to finance their own military conquest and subjugation. It uh, floated war bonds in Wall Street and subsequently made the people pay uh, for these through taxation. To extract super profits, the U.S. made investments in the expansion of plantations, opening of mines, establishment of a few monopoly enterprises, and acceleration of domestic and foreign trade. It generated a semi-feudal type of social economy, dependent on imported man manufacturers and raw material exports from a persistent feudal base. It established an educational and cultural system that perpetuated colonial mentality, but this time servile to the US instead of Spain. Superimposed bourgeois ideas and values on those feudal and religious ones previously propagated by the dominant Catholic Church. It systematically used education and culture to breed a new and bigger core of puppet politicians and to produce the professionals and clerks to serve the expanded bureaucracy and businesses. The social structure that has arisen from the semi-feudal economy includes the basic ruling classes of the comprador big bourgeois and landlords, who are f fractions of 1% of the population. The basic exploited classes are the workers and peasants, which are around 15 and 75% respectively. Since the early years of the 20th century, the trade union movement has developed among the workers. Since 1930, upon the establishment of the first Communist Party, the Communist Party of the Philippine Islands, the revolutionary idea of the working class leading the people in the National Democratic Revolution and consequently the Socialist Revolution has acquired reality and taken roots in the Philippines. In 1946, the U.S. granted nominal independence to the Philippines. Since then, the political system has become semi-colonial, no longer ruled directly by the U.S., but indirectly through puppet politicians who are essentially bureaucrat capitalists and who serve the U.S. as well as the interests of the big compradors and landlords in the semi-feudal economy. The U.S. has retained its dominance and control over the economic, political, cultural, and security system of the Philippines. The Philippines was touted by the U.S. as a show window of democracy, in fact, a cesspool of neocolonialism and semi-feudalism. Because the duopoly 
of the Liberal Party and Nationalist Party alternated in uh, taking presidential power through periodic elections, as in the United States. They clarified the character of Philippine society as semi-colonial and semi-feudal, and the corresponding character of the Philippine Revolution as national and democratic under the leadership of the working class. The motive forces of the revolution are the workers, peasants, and the urban petty bourgeoisie. The enemies are US imperialism, the big compradors, landlords, and bureaucrat capitalists. The current stage of national democratic revolution through protracted people's war is directed towards reaching the stage of socialist revolution. The revolutionary advance of the CPP, NP, and NDF was the decisive factor in the overthrow of the Marcos fascist dictatorship in 1986. But since then, one regime after another has masqueraded as democratic and has oppressed and exploited the people for the benefit of US imperialism and the local exploiting classes of big compradors and landlords. The new democratic revolution through protracted people's war has therefore continued in order to fight for national liberation, democracy, social justice, development through land reform and national industrialization, a national scientific and mass culture, and international solidarity for peace and development. For the purpose of the people in putting on trial US imperialism and its puppets, we must be aware of the comprehensive range of crimes that they are culpable for. When we speak of US imperialism, we refer to the US federal state and its various agencies, the corporations and banks, which are impelled by monopoly capitalism to engage in aggression and plunder. The US engaged in cultural imperialism and perpetuated colonial mentality. It imposed on the people not only the English language, but also pro-imperialist ideas and values that obscured the blood debts of the US and misrepresented the exploitation of the people as beneficial. It bent the feudal and medieval belief system of the dominant Catholic Church to serve the interest of US monopoly capitalism. The U.S. trained the bureaucrats, politicians, and professionals to be servile to U.S. imperialist power and to use the language of pro-imperialist liberal democracy to deceive the people. It was most responsible for promoting bureaucratic capitalism. It taught the children of the exploiting classes and the urban petty bourgeois to seek and hold power and amass private wealth through bureaucratic corruption. When the U.S. pretended to grant independence in the Philippines in 1946, it was sure of being able to rely on its puppets, the big compradors and landlords and bureaucrat capitalists. Since then, it has retained control over the economy, the politics, the culture, security, and diplomatic relations of the Philippines. The U.S. is culpable for the semi-colonial system of exploitation, underdevelopment, and rampant Poverty. Puppetry to US imperialism is a grave crime against the people. It is treason. It is the betrayal and violation of the people's sovereignty and national independence in an all round way. Traitors are subject to trial by the people. Bureaucratic corruption is a grave crime committed by the bureaucrat capitalists. They auction off the economic sovereignty the national patrimony and business privileges to foreign monopoly corporations and big compradors. They impose a heavy tax and debt burden on the people and rob the national treasury through the pork barrel system. The right to self-determination of the national minorities and indigenous people is grievously violated. They are deprived of their right to ancestral domain and their land and other natural resources are grabbed from them by the local exploiting classes, and by the mining, logging, plantation, and real estate uh, companies. Upholding, defending, and promoting the people's culture is a crucial and necessary part of the comprehensive program for the People's Democratic Revolution in the Philippines. People's culture has a national, scientific, and mass character. By having a national character, it upholds national independence and serves the needs and aspirations of the nation. 
it cherishes and harmonize, harmonizes all the regional and local cultures in the country. It learns from other countries, but is not subservient to them or dependent on them. It contributes what it can to the advance of human civilization and international solidarity. By being scientific in character, it is free from the shackles of medieval belief and superstition. And at the same time, it respects the freedom of thought and belief. It adopts revolutionary ideas from the high road of human civilization. It seeks to modernize and develop society by benefiting from scientific and technological advances. By having a mass character, it serves the rights and interests of the toiling masses of the people and not of the few who belong to the exploiting classes. The culture of the people is opposed to the culture of the exploiting few. The arts are a great part of culture. They include architecture, sculpture, painting, creative writing, music, dance, theater, photography, and comics. All these are art forms and their creations are not simply passive objects of appreciation or static reflectors of reality. They should be an active force for exposing and opposing the crimes of malevolent forces in society, for arousing, organizing, and mobilizing the masses, and for making fundamental social change. It will still take some time before the People's Democratic Revolution can overthrow the existing ruling system on a nationwide scale in the Philippines in order to put on trial the worst of criminals, meet out punishments to them, and put to an end the root causes of oppression and exploitation. But while the juridical processes of the People's Democratic State system are not yet available, except in the countryside where revolutionary organs of political power and people's courts have come into existence, the cultural process of putting on trial the criminals through the various art forms can run ahead and have influence and effects on a wide scale. In reflecting social reality and exposing and opposing the crimes of oppression and exploitation, the various art forms metaphorically, symbolically, or allegorically perform the various stages and functions of the criminal trial, such as preliminary investigation or exposure of the uh, of facts of the crimes, indictment and the trial proper in which facts are established on the basis of evidence and testimonies and the application of law in the judgment. It is the moral court of public opinion rather than a court of law however, that is addressed in the people's trial of the malefactors. The people's trial can be further invigorated and reinforced by integrating or coordinating it with artistic works and performances. The revolutionary people and forces in the Philippines have all the right to stage people's trials of US imperialism and local reactionaries in order to expose and oppose the real criminals and fight for justice.